And a very warm welcome to all of you here in the Barony Hall, one of the jewels in the university's estate, uh, and it is put to no better use than to celebrate the process of graduation. We are currently graduands before me, and uh, also on our stage, who over the course of the next 45 minutes or so will be magically transformed into Strathclyde graduates, celebrating their wonderful work. Uh, and their achievements. Uh, to mums and dads, members of the family, friends, extended communities, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, and uh, this day of celebration is always a very special day in our calendar. Uh, you see before you many of our academic staff and support staff here on the stage. I'm also delighted to welcome today uh, a very distinguished alum of Strathclyde, and that's Barnes Goldie, who is right here. Uh, very welcome to join us. Uh, and uh, later on in the ceremony, I'll give you some updates uh, as to the university's activities and their direction of travel. But with that, I will now formally declare the congregation open uh, and invite the uh, Executive Dean of Engineering to introduce the graduates. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Principal and Vice Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, for research in the Department of Architecture, Aisha Abu Bakar. <laughs> Nawaf Hassan Al Ahmadi. Mohammed Abdurrahman Al Ghassab, <laughs> Haider Yasim Essa Al Saidi, <laughs> for research in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Ding Fan. Garrett John Jones. <laughs> Philip Meller. <laughs> Amy Romaniuk. <laughs> Salufi Emmanuel. Ronald Joseph Turner. For research in the Department of Naval Architecture, Ocean and Marine Engineering, Minglu Chen. Sefer Anil Gümbeyaz. Arash Hemati Topkanlu. <laughs> Zhu Ji. <laughs> Liang Li. <laughs> Yanis Raptodemos. <laughs> Naz Yilmaz. For research in the Department of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, Han Ling Wan. <laughs> Yang Shang Zhang. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Environmental Engineering, Keith Joseph Fernandez. Rebecca Martin. In environmental entrepreneurship, Sheena Boyd. In civil engineering, what's from Christopher?
in civil engineering with structural engineering and project management, Huang Dak An. In sustainability and environmental studies, Zhu Yang Huang. In sustainable engineering, offshore renewable energy, Jack Squeeze Nixon. For the degree of Master of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Ryan Burrell. <laughs> Jennifer Boyd. <laughs> Christopher Burns. <laughs> Andre Trayan Bushashu. David James Campbell. Jake Fraser Chalmers. Liam John Connor. Nicholas Copland. Rachel Yon Kurushank. Michael Hugh Cunningham. Peter Alexander Davy. Uris Donnelly. Kaya Dunlop. Jack Alexander Dansmuir. Bruce Patrick Fagan. Laura Holliday. Emma Lewis Hall. Sophie Henderson. Rachel Ann Houston. Kenneth David Johnston. <laughs> Graham Stuart Lemon. <laughs> Jonas Lilemetz Edmund. <laughs> Robin William McCall. Katrina McKeehan. <laughs> Patrick Joseph McIlvain. <laughs> Iona and Mackay. <laughs> Michael Thomas McKechnie. Donald Sunderland Mackenzie. <laughs> Kara Louise McMurtry. <laughs> Andrew McNee. <laughs> Daniel John McRoberts. <laughs> Andrew Mullins. Emma Louise Quinn. <laughs> Zavid Siddiqui. <laughs> Kieran Smith. <laughs> Claire Frances Stevenson. <laughs> Kyle Stewart. Ruth Claire Sweeney.
Elliot Jeremy Williamson. Craig Wilson. Joseph Patrick Wilton. In civil and environmental engineering, Michael Culligan. George William Stuart Harris. Robert Hassan. Katrin Mary MacDonald. Callum McLean. Jonathan McMillan. Jackson Terrace. Alan Weza. In Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, Konstantinos Bartsits. <laughs> David Paul Brown. <laughs> Scott Campbell. <laughs> Ken Fu Chu. Sebastiano Ferrara. <laughs> Alexandros Kaiserevs. <laughs> Panagiotis Lurus. <laughs> Jack David McCrossan. <laughs> Panagiotis Palimeris. Anastasios Pavlidis. <laughs> Georgios Pepas. <laughs> Nico Rahmani. <laughs> Jason James Rees. <laughs> Ryan Thomas Sims. Tan Yi Shang. Marianne Veselinov Todorov. Stefanos Zenikakis. In Naval Architecture with Ocean Engineering, Giles Hong Yin Brown. Callum Campbell. Bruce Stephen Kamana. Taylor Stuart Forbes. Dimitri Yanoni. Andres Kofmans. Muhammad Izzat Daniel Mohamed Jaya Jayadran. <laughs> David Ramsey. <laughs> Matthew James Royce. <laughs> Mark Kenny Stark. <laughs> Jamie MacArthur Weatherston. Santiago Jose Zuniga Werner. In naval architecture with high performance marine vehicles, Aristoteles Betsis. Michael Adam Zop.
Robert George Dodd. Thomas James William King. Ante August Lipsanen. Finley Michael Angus Macmillan. Vasiliki Pasia. Sophie MacDonald Taylor. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering, Muad Abdullah Mohammed Al Harasi. Aaron Wiley. Alan Barr. Gabriel Dover. Niall Andrew Peter Harrison. <laughs> Gelodi Kandolo Kalukanda. <laughs> Callum Ramsey. <laughs> Kieran Russell Simpson. <laughs> Alan William Waddell. Abdullah Halid Al Siyabi. Amy Constance Harris. Malik Merkan Ilyas. Stephen White. Abbas Maerza. In Civil and Environmental Engineering, Rona Elizabeth Minro. Cameron McKeough. Abdul Samad Khan. In Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, Rebecca Joyce. Azrul Eminu Rahman bin Yunus. In Naval Architecture with Ocean Engineering, Samuel James Stewart Haggerty. Angus Nicol. Michael Nijoku. Ross Nathan Shavelin. In Naval Architecture with High Performance Marine Vehicles, Matthias Kriajewski. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies, Alexandra Jenny Adams. Vasilis Apios. <laughs> Samantha Old. <laughs> Mimi Lia Black. <laughs> Yoon Andrew Campbell. <laughs> Jessica Gaudi Cowan. Anna Maria Cosma. <laughs> Albion Dumani. <laughs> Christina Maria Enberg. <laughs> Heather Kirsty Fiona Gibson. <laughs> Louis Wiley Gibson. 
Karen Heaney. Ralitsa Ivanova. Zalia Georgieva Ivanova. Kara Lindsay McCollum. Amy McEwen. James Paul Miller. Rosalind Catherine Mullen. Irene Palmiotto. Francesca Petta. Emma Sophie Poulton. Alisa Raichi. Ralitsa Galinova Slachiva. Charlotte Sorensen. Jonathan Watson. Ryan Wilson. Laura Caitlin Aitken. Elena Betit Betites Espino. Aaron Andrew Blackwood. Emma Callow. Rui Chen. Dominic Jakob Franksek. Matthew Gaffney. Emma Elaine Hart. Alexandra Lazaru. Louis Ashley Menorgroski. Gary William Morgan. David Nikolov. <laughs> Amelia Nitika. <laughs> Jonathan Y. Nam Seng. <laughs> Caroline Trivel McLeod. <laughs> Scott Harlow. Katarzyna Zasada. <laughs> Laura Mahlohlan. <laughs> Elena Pampana. <laughs> Victoria Vaskova. <laughs> Sofia Michailardo. In Architectural Studies with International Study, Heather Bird. <laughs> Scott Grant. <laughs> Sean Clark Kay. <laughs> Ethan Gordon Kennedy. Mohamed Halaf, <laughs> Robbie Grandlow, <laughs> Ayufe Blunt Knight Nolan, <laughs> Ryan Alexander Reed, <laughs> Myrie Jean Watson.
Gary Wright. Neil McPherson. Stephen Oates. In Architectural Studies, Megan Barrett. For the degree of Doctor of Engineering, for research in the Department of Naval Architecture, Ocean and Marine Engineering, Leah barrett Hewitt. Master of Engineering, Naval Architecture with High Performance Craft, Woodrash John Replensky. <laughs> for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for research in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Jafal Yahya Saleh Al Jawad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll have uh, applause fatigue, but I think the class of 2019 deserves a big collective round of applause. Well done. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, now Strathclyde graduates too, let me reiterate our warm and sincere welcome to this wonderful ceremony. A day that none of you will forget that marks the successful conclusion of years of hard work and now you've graduated in front of your proud families, friends and colleagues. Today uh, we've welcomed people from all over Scotland, uh, from across the UK and of course from a wonderful international community too. We are delighted to see you all here to join in our celebrations. Of course, as part of the context within which you are graduating today, and as you take your next exciting steps into the next phase of your lives and your careers, we might just reflect on the world that you're stepping into and the prevailing political dynamics in Scotland, in the UK, throughout Europe, and of course, uh, the ever-present noises from across the Atlantic. It's worthwhile acknowledging the key roles for universities in this time of flux. Your university, Strathclyde, is an institution where freedom of thought is valued and encouraged. We are a place that is both tolerant and inclusive, and where people of diverse national, cultural, and social backgrounds come together to enjoy an excellent education and, importantly, a shared student experience. At Strathclyde, all of us benefit from having students and staff from over 100 different countries. Ours is a socially progressive community and one that seeks to be an exemplar for modern society. We seek to be plural, to be multicultural, and as far as we possibly can, to be enlightened too. It's our individual and collective responsibilities to continue to challenge unacceptable practices wherever we find it in society, in the workplace, and increasingly including those in power too. And we do that by applying reason, holding others to account, and by exemplifying a diverse and inclusive modern society, uh, not uh, uh, anywhere better than on this campus. But of course, most importantly today, we're here to acknowledge your hard work, the learning that you've built up and the successful completion of your degree course. As an electrical engineer uh, educated here at Strathclyde, I often quote Thomas Edison, the famous American inventor, and he reminded us that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. But I'm sure as Strathclyders, your percentages were much better than that in the libraries and as you prepared for your exams. Uh, I am a son of Glasgow. I was brought up in a sunny hamlet called Govan. And our town's historical motto is nihil sine labore, 
or nothing without hard work. And I try to embrace that ethos every day. And I would recommend that all of you now graduates take that with you into your future careers. Uh, you're all smart women and men. You're highly accomplished. But that extra ounce of effort very often makes all the difference. And today you've become Strathclyde alumni. And you're the latest of our torchbearers, just like those in many generations of graduates that have gone before you. And with all that you've successfully come through now, I'm sure that you would agree that you couldn't have done it without the backing and encouragement of the community of supporters around you. And it's fitting that we acknowledge their part in the successful completion of your university studies. Our graduates and the university at large owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. As the first in my own family to have gone to university here in Strathclyde back in the 70s, as a very talented five-year-old boy, there's no many youngsters can get into university at that age, let me tell you. Uh, here in the engineering faculty, I know the importance of such support. So today's graduates and indeed my university staff, we'd like to take the opportunity now to thank your families, your friends and your supporters for all that they've done to make today possible. Thank you. And for our academic staff too here, uh, there is a very important day for them to celebrate because ultimately your success is their reward. Strathclyde and its staff and its supporters have worked very hard to provide you all with a high quality education and a first class university experience for all of our students, regardless of background. So let me now invite our new graduates in the hall and in the stage to join me in thanking our excellent academic staff for all that they've done to support you in your journey. Thank you. So as you leave as graduates today, it's important for you to be aware of your place, Strathclyde, and that we were founded in 1796, 223 years ago. And although uh, that uh, gives us a very august position in Scotland, I still like to lead this place with my colleagues like a 200-year-old startup, excited, ambitious, full of innovation, and driving to make things special for all of those that you engage with us. And we want to retain that same exciting incitement and purpose uh, as we were the only higher education institution to be established in Scotland during the Scottish Enlightenment. And our founding principles were, and I quote, to undertake education and research for the benefit of all mankind. Our founder, Professor John Anderson, uh, we would call a physicist today, but back then he was called a natural philosopher, uh, had very strong links with Benjamin Franklin, the American inventor and academic. And Franklin was one of the founders of the University of Pennsylvania in 1751 with the motto of useful knowledge. And this influenced our founder, John Anderson, who engaged with him often, uh, not only with uh, Franklin, but with Enlightenment thinkers at the time. And of course, Strathclyde's motto of useful learning came out of that notion of challenge and opportunity. And never has that philosophy been more relevant since our establishment some 200 years or so ago. And our motto that should be known and certainly carried out of here by our staff and students still defines our purpose as a leading international technological university that is also committed to being socially progressive. For example, across our campus and in the building that you'll have passed today on your way to the Barony Hall, drugs to diagnose and fight disease. We have several drugs currently on clinical trials in the areas of cancer treatment, kidney disease, infection management and inflammatory diseases. Strathclyders are also producing energy technologies and policy solutions to tackle climate change and to establish a low carbon economy. We are revolutionizing global manufacturing and helping to create the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 robotics, AI, data analytics, and automation. Our students continue their work in Africa, establishing clean water and power supplies, deploying healthcare systems in remote communities, and introducing new telecommunications infrastructure. They are bringing prosthetic limb and bioengineering technologies to those in need in India. And of course, across the university, we are working to inform public policy on national economic strategy, education, health, and energy. Down in George Street, and you, you may have seen the very large building there we call the Technology and Innovation Centre, or our, our TIC building, uh, that has us worked very closely with industry. Over £100 million worth of investment in and around that building, working on energy systems, photonics, 
bio nanotechnologies and pharmaceuticals. I mentioned Thomas Edison earlier. Edison, who I, uh, he called his technical teams and his laboratories his inventions factory. I like to think of tech as our innovations factory. And we are now reinforcing our position down at that part of the city. Uh, and uh, just this week, our court, our governing body, gave us the approval to go forward with another £150 million pounds investment, making this part of Glasgow Scotland's first innovation district now attracting inward investment, creating great job opportunities for our students and driving the economy and inclusive growth for the people of Glasgow. Now working in the, the buildings that will spring up there in the next 24 months, working med tech and fintech, quantum technology, industrial informatics, 5G communications and space technology, putting Glasgow in the map in terms of these new driv uh, driven horizon uh, strategies. And of course, we talk about useful learning. That's our motto. We are giving business and industry the tools that they need to be more innovative and to promote economic growth. This helps create jobs and provides us all with a quality of life that is both sustainable and healthy. But ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, we're providing people with the opportunity to transform their lives and the lives of their families. And as I mentioned earlier, we still attract many first-generation university students to Strathclyde. And these are some of the reasons that we've had such a terrific sequence of external independent recognition of what we do and how we do it. In recent years, we've been recognized regularly at the annual UK Times Higher Education Awards. And the awards that we've picked up have been Research Project of the Year. We became the UK University of the Year, Entrepreneurial University of the Year, Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, which was a particular delight for me because that talked about the community at Strathclyde and how we did things. And just last year, the Herald Award for Higher Education Institution of the Year, talking not just about what we do, but how we do it. So Strathclyde continues to demonstrate a disproportionate impact on society and economy, principally graduates through you. Whilst we undertake world-class research, our finest contribution to society is all of you as you make your way now into your careers, making an impact on your local communities or further afield, and then pursuing excellent professional endeavor. And of course, the quality of our research is uh, excellent and the highly effective ways in which we've created to uh, draw out value and impact for our uh, partners in the public and private sector by translating knowledge. Of course, universities have to be seen as an investment. And while the Scottish government invests around 1.2 billion per annum in Scottish universities, we deliver back around £7 billion pounds worth of impact into the Scottish economy. And certainly, the achievements of our students and staff in the Faculty of Engineering throughout this last year gives me great confidence for the future and the travel that we are on. And I, I've only been able to pick a few highlights uh, to give you an idea of what these wonderful academics and our students have been doing. So, for example, we've just been, in the past six months, named the anchor partners for the new National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland a world-class applied research and innovation centre. Based out at Glasgow Airport, we already have our forging and forming centre out there. Our core industry collaborators are including Rolls-Royce, Boeing, GE, Spirit Aerosystems, and Williams Formula One, and others including several uh, Scottish-based supply chain companies. Also in the same site, over the next uh, uh, 18 months, you're gonna see springing out of the ground the uh, Scottish Medicines Manufacturing Innovation Centre in partnership with GSK and AstraZeneca. In combination, out at the airport, with us as the lead partner, that will be £190 million of capital investment coming from Scottish Government, Scottish Enterprise, Innovate UK, uh, from our colleagues in Bays uh, uh, down south, as well as our industry partners. And this will put a major spotlight on Scotland as an international hub, and critically, rebuilding our global reputation for manufacturing excellence. This is expected to derive about a billion pounds of gross value add back into the Scottish economy and creating around 5,000 jobs in the Glasgow area and through Renfrewshire. And of course, in terms of engineering making a difference to the quality of life, our biomedical engineers have developed measurement devices that they hope soon will underpin a new rapid and cost-effective test for the early diagnosis of sepsis. An increasing challenge for health and patient outcomes where rapid detection is critically important, led by our colleague Damien Corrigan. Uh, we've also launched a significant clinical investigation, again, engineering and health, where we use a technique called nano-kicking, 
where we deliver energy into bones, and it's a fantastic news for sufferers of osteoporosis because we can now stimulate stem cells turning into bone, uh, healthy bone material. Our Professor Keith Bell in the engineering faculty has just been appointed to the UK Committee for Climate Change, and you've been hearing a lot from them recently because they're driving now this uh, co correct global focus on minimising global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade or less, hopefully, over the next 50 years to tackle climate change. Uh, and of course, they're also driving the UK government's commitment to be net zero carbon by 2050. And recently, the Scottish government has brought forward their targets to be net zero by 2045. And their city, I'm happy to say, only last month, uh, with help from us, has announced they want Glasgow to be the UK's first net zero carbon city. That's leadership, it's being bold, and it's also about doing the right thing. Two of our engineering professors, Becky Lunn, uh, MBE from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, and Graham Wren, were elected Fellows of the Royal Academy of Engineering in the past year in recognition of their outstanding and continuing contributions to the profession. And Graham, just last weekend, received an OBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours uh, list for his contributions to engineering. And also this week, uh, Becky, uh, who holds one of the Royal Academy of Engineering Chairs, launched the Royal Society of Edin Edinburgh report on the inquiry into Scotland's energy future. A two-year piece of work by the RSC and uh, uh, Becky Vice, uh, was vice chair of that, that group. But uh, of course, this great research, this great impact is super, but it's the talent that we produce. And for a few years now, we've been delivering the BP and Bam Nuttall Summer School for Girls, led by the Faculty of Engineering, coordinated by Stella Paitarulli from CEE, or Civil Environmental Engineering. The summer school is only for girls, and specifically for 114-year-old girls from across schools in Scotland. Their aim is to encourage more girls into engineering careers, and that's good, because my twin daughters are both engineers, both educated at Strathclyde University, so they're following in lots of good footsteps. And you can see on the stage the fantastic female talent that we've got here, uh, educating and researching in Strathclyde. As we speak, literally as we speak, at the other side of the campus, on the Rotten Row Gardens, these girls have just started their Build a Shelter project, delivered by colleagues from the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. They've had to design and build a full-scale emergency shelter for one person, which can be used in emergency camps after destructive earthquakes. And just after lunch, our industry sponsors will be here on the campus from BP and from Bam Nuttall to judge the shelters. And the criteria are innovative design, low cost, strength, and being waterproof. And the latter criterion is going to be interesting because the test is that they throw a bucket of water on the shelter, which is fine, but the judges are actually inside the shelter. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you traverse the campus later on, uh, have a look for what I would call Druket Industrial Sponsors. Hopefully still with a smile on their face. Well, anyway, there goes our sponsorship deal. But uh, nonetheless, uh, our students, uh, our, our prospective students will be doing a super job. So, all of you graduates, this is the exciting context within which you should view your awards. You're now graduates of a university that places our students at the heart of all that we do. We value excellence in both research and teaching, and we create strong connections with society at large, as well as with the business world and with international partners. And on that last point, the very best universities collaborate, contribute, and compete on the international stage, and we're no different. In the United States, our principal partners are Stanford, New York University, and MIT. MIT just been announced this week as the number one university in the world. We're working closely with them. Uh, with growing partnerships with Caltech and the University of Southern California. In China, we work with many institutions, uh, also with research connections to Tsinghua University, the number one university in China, and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, the number one technological university in Asia. In Singapore, Nanyang Technological University and the National University of Singapore, and I've been at most of these institutions in the first half of this year, and we have, importantly, a very strong raft of collaborations with our European partners. I have the privilege of being chairman of an entity called CESAR, which is the collaboration of 52 European technological universities, trying to demonstrate by practice and contribution that uh, in spite of the political waves that we are all swimming against just now, uh, that collaboration will continue regardless of the outcome. And that will be down to people, vision, and trust in each other's, uh, how should we say, values 
and the contributions that each of us can make. Of course, with all of that research collaboration, our students are direct beneficiaries of being part of an international university. It helps them emerge with the skills so necessary to help themselves and Scotland's development and to play a full part in the world. And our students, very importantly, have been exposed to the richness of different cultures and traditions. And you leave the hall today, graduates, understanding your obligations as global citizens. And as well as the global impact we have, we take our role in this city very seriously. As I say, we've been based in this city for 223 years. Uh, I chair the uh, Glasgow Economic Leadership Board, uh, which was part of the community that brought the 1.2 billion investment into Glasgow four years ago uh, around the Glasgow City deal, trying to recapture that investment that we so benefited from at the end of the late 19th century and the 20th centuries, bringing the world to Glasgow and when we were the second city of the empire. Now Glasgow's building confidence and momentum and Strathclyde's in the heart of it. And with regard to our socially progressive mission, I'm proud to say because of the work of my excellent colleagues that we remain the leading Scottish research intensive university for widening participation in Scottish education and here at Strathclyde for our degrees, with students coming from some of the most challenged communities in Scotland, the communities that I belong to, where I came from as I came to Strathclyde. And once again this year, we've admitted over a thousand of young women and men from these communities, uh, with including 500 from some of the most challenged, uh, challenged areas of societies. And yet, just last week, we were found to have the fifth highest entrance qualifications in the UK making a nonsense of this idea that if you're opening your doors to folk from uh, low attainment communities, you must be lowering your standards. Not a thing of it. Uh, because we make it a strategic commitment, it's wonderful that we do that. And just in this hall three weeks ago, uh, the graduation ceremony for the year began here with uh, about 220 youngsters aged 5 to 14 in the Children's University. I'm the Chancellor of the Children's University. And they came across this stage with their gowns and their caps on, and uh, they got their bachelor's degrees. Now they get a learning passport if they go to Kelvin Grove Art Gallery or the Science Centre or a night class or some sporting uh, activity, they get a stamp on their passport. And if they fill the passport, they get a bachelor's degree. Sort of about 108 year olds getting their bachelor's degree. If they do it the next year, they get their master's degree. <laughs> and this year, with the first couple of PhD students, from the Children's University that my colleagues are going to have to be teaching PhD students when they get here uh, in due course. And of course, I love that ceremony because unlike today when I have to stand in a box to cap some of these people, I can lean down to cap some of these wee toties. But to uh, tell you what, 12 year olds are getting pretty tall these days as well. But there we have it, Strathclyde, uh, how would I describe us in 2019? We have ambition, focus and momentum with the agility and commitment to deliver our strategy, and that's so necessary to absorb the continuing challenges in our sector and the political uncertainties that we face. It's a great privilege for me to lead this wonderful institution with the wonderful support I get from my executive team and all of my academics and support and professional services staff. And I truly believe that our founder, John Anderson, would recognize what we are doing today as the realization of what he sought to establish back during the Scottish Enlightenment. Strathclyde now seeks in our modern society to be an agent for positive change here in Glasgow, in Scotland, the UK and the world stage. And to all of you in the Barony Hall today, I am certain that today's graduates will have a, an enormous impact on the world and that 2019 can truly be a vintage year. And with that in mind, and as you leave the hall today, you'll leave not just with an award, but also with a responsibility. You're joining a community of Strathclyde some 170,000 strong around the world. So whatever you do with your degree and wherever you go to pursue your career, please remember that useful learning means that you apply your knowledge for the benefit of others. Make a positive impact for yourselves and the communities you belong to. Respect diversity. Value freedom of expression and thought and reach conclusions and resolve disputes through the application of reason and tolerance. These are the core values of your university. And to today's celebration, we're here to mark your fantastic achievements and well done to all those who received their degrees today. On behalf of the university, let me extend our sincere congratulations. We wish you every success in your future careers. Please stay in touch with us. Let us know about your progress. And now, well done, and please enjoy the rest of this very special day. Thank you very much.
So, ladies and gentlemen, that ends the formalities. Uh, as we close the ceremonies today, the stage party will process down the hall, followed by our new graduates. All families and friends, please join us. We're actually going to go across to the Lord Todd Hall, where there'll be refreshments and a chance to mingle and uh, get photographs and everyone's finery. Uh, and with that, uh, let me now declare this congregation formally closed. And thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.